Back one and five for five. Okay, let's take a number like uh, nine. Nine is uh, second is by one, three, and nine. Okay, clear. If there are uh, issues, uh, let me know, right? If there are any suggestions, right? Parana, uh, your one is good. Uh, you have taken a loop and you are adding that value to the loop. Sorry, array. Sorry. Uh, and then you are printing the values of the array, right? <clears throat> so, what you are actually doing is you are uh, not printing then and there. You are storing it in the data structure, all the results, and then you are putting out the, uh, the content of the data structure, right? Okay, we look at a bit of uh, file handling uh, now because we, we did only one example that day uh, that was uh, searching, uh, reading, right? <clears throat> right, so here what happens is uh, sample.txt is open, um, open for writing in writing mode, right? And then uh, what we are doing is we are writing a value a text value to that file and then we are closing the file right so remember once you open the file it has to be closed <clears throat> that's uh, very important right okay then uh, here what we do is after writing and closing that file we are opening it again but this time we are opening it for reading right reading oh, hope the text is clear right you can read right is it readable or yes fine um then uh, you open it for reading and then uh, you read the uh, line by line and put it to a variable um and for first you put the whole file into a variable and then from that you read line by line and then you print the line of text right and then you close it that's for reading right okay and then uh, this is uh, appending <coughs> uh again you open the file but in appending mode or uh, write privilege and then you write this text and then you write another text and uh, this is a, a escape character which is goes to the next line backslash and we saw that uh, in the last class and then you close the file right and then here you open the file again the same file and then it will uh, read the lines uh, read the whole file and put it to this uh, now here here of course when you put uh, read it will read the whole content right? uh, when you do this read line it will read line by line Okay, so let's fix this. Let me show you the file. It is sample text, right? Okay, now this is the text file which was generated. Now, if the file is not uh, <clears throat> already created, it will create the file and write it, right? If the file is already there, it will open the file and do it, right? Mm. Right. So what happened was uh, this file handling was written, and then uh, we read it. Right? When we read it, uh, it came like this. Okay, and uh, then uh, it was open, and then uh, this was uh, appended. Appended means appending means you are pushing new values into the existing file, right? So if you use write, what will happen is it will overwrite everything. But if you append, uh, it will write it to the existing uh, content, right? And then uh, this was appended, and then it was uh, enter a set of numbers and. <laughs> Count how many you have entered. Right. Um, use the row value zero to exit the loop right okay i'll give you uh two three minutes can you guys uh, write the program for this <clears throat> how about uh, typing uh, i mean yeah 
without uh, doing it on python you do it on a notepad or something or maybe on a paper because they ask you to write the program code enter set of numbers some random numbers right and then uh, when you exit the loop by entering zero now zero now if you are terminating a loop uh, based on a value that use enters that is called a rog value right so here the rog value is zero so as long as uh, it the number is not equal to zero you continue when the user enters zero you exit and you uh, output how many numbers he has entered right let's assume that he enters only uh, positive values so everyone can understand that okay <clears throat> so it's better you always start with uh, a comment so that it describes what the program is right mm -hmm. and uh, Set of numbers and output the output how many numbers and use uh, enters wrong. Value zero, right? Mm, okay. So we need to store the value that the user enters. So we have num, and I'm going to start num with one. I'll explain why. Then I need to have a counter uh, to count the uh, total number of uh, numbers he enters, right? And then while, <clears throat> as long as the number is not equal to zero number not equal to zero right now in uh, uh one uh, you have a while true loop and then inside that it checks whether we are entering zero and if so it will break right so here uh, we have put the condition as long as it is not equal to zero you continue uh, then uh, that means if it is zero it will exit right so what you have to do you have to ask the user to enter the number enter a number okay and then uh, once he enters a number that is a count so I increase the count by one and uh, okay and then I come to the output print entered this is called concatenation right you are joining text with uh, the values you are joining different outputs together count i'm putting count minus one i'll tell you why numbers okay one two three you have entered three numbers right now the reason is uh, we should not uh, <coughs> count zero as a number because zero is a rogue value right so uh, one thing here uh, i started with num one because here we need to enter into the loop right because loop says uh, as long as num not equal to zero so if i start with zero it will never enter the uh, loop so i start with uh, one Okay, so rog value means, yeah, rog value means we continue um, uh, a loop until a user enters a particular value, right? If the user enters that value, we exit. So, Tarana, uh, your solution is not really uh, using a rog value in the in the while loop, right? In the loop, okay. Mm, so rog value is uh, used into the condition of the loop so as long as uh, user does not enter zero we continue when the user enters zero we exit the loop so that is a rog value okay 
so for the uh, for the condition of the loop we put a value that's what a rogue value is until we don't satisfy that value right so uh, if i started uh, num as 0 uh, the thing is uh, condition is num not equal to 0 yeah but it is in the if condition that's true uh, but normally the rogue value is put into the condition of the uh, loop right okay fine your 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 solution is correct but i'm trying to explain this uh, wrong concept right uh, value concept uh, so if i put zero zero is not equal to zero <clears throat> that is wrong therefore it will never enter uh, the while loop that's why i started uh, num as one so num one is not equal to zero that is true uh, so it enters the loop and asks for the user input and then count okay that's why i started uh, num as one uh yes normally the rogue value is put into the condition of the loop whether it is the uh, let's say whether it is the uh, while loop or the repeat until or whatever the loop is the the repetition is okay right uh what you used was like uh, uh i mean the concept is there but normally the rogue value is put it you put it into the loop what you did was you, uh, you use the break command to exit the loop when use enters right so you are you are you are, you are purposely checking it but in if you put it to the while loop it will automatically check right uh, because while loop uh, the loop continues as long as it doesn't enter enters that value right okay so uh, uh, then here I had to minus one from uh, count because uh, he, when he enters zero here that uh, is also counted as a number right so when he enters zero it is counted as a number and then goes and checks the condition and then exit so that uh, zero is already added as a count that's why uh, this was uh, minus minus one okay right so let's look at another example So let's look at another simple one. Okay, can you guys do this? Countdown uh, from a number entered by the user. Countdown. Countdown uh, from that number. From a number entered by the user to uh one if he enters zero 99 98 like that look at this uh in computer programming sentinel uh, what is the rock value in programming right also referred to as a flag value trip value rock value uh is a special value in the context of an algorithm which uses its presence as a condition or termination typically in a loop or a recursive algorithm right that's why i told you right it's usually used in a loop Okay, so we'll uh, we'll do it. Uh, okay, so as you do it, uh, you think you think how it happens, right? Okay, so we need to input a value. User has to input a value. So let's call it x in input the value. Or a number right then I can use a while loop while uh, that is as long as uh, X is greater than 
zero as long as x is greater than zero because i don't want to print zero uh, then print x and then uh, we should deduct the number so if it is nine eight like that so x uh, minus equals one Okay, is it clear for others? So it's all easy. Okay, let's look at a few more. Okay, can you guys do this? Uh, So what we are actually trying to do here is um, to give you more confidence in and uh, facing these Python uh, questions, right? Uh, because in the essay type question, essay paper, um, you have the choice of selecting only four out of five questions, right? So most of the students might be uh, getting rid of the Python question, but you can't uh, really get rid of Python because it, there are so many questions coming in the MCQ. It's still some people might be uh, not really wasting time on those questions and then spending more time on the other question uh, that's uh, basically because of the fear of, of uh, programming right uh, so i think um, the whole idea here is is to build the confidence so that you can do all the python questions in the uh, in the mcq as well as you can paste the theory uh, python question uh, in the essay, essay type paper right because you can uh, easily score the uh, marks there, right? If you practice. Okay, so how about uh, this one? Okay, uh, you can use the same program. You can make a slight modification, right? So this time we want to do this. Calculate the total of a set of numbers entered by the user. Right, so I'll give you uh, two or three minutes. Anana, it's uh, for me, of course, it's a bit difficult to say. Um, because I'm more into this. Uh, London syllabus computer science, but uh, when I went through the past papers, um, I noticed that there were some questions. Um, but I don't think uh, one whole question would come because uh, it's related to HTML. So I don't think uh, any reason why it should come separately. But let me let me uh, do an analysis and tell you, right? Because uh, one reason it can come with the uh, it can come as a part of a question is it's related to HTML and web development so uh, html css and php uh, is a combination for a part uh, for a question then uh, php might be a part of a question uh, reason why php can be included in a separate question would be to test your programming skill in that but then uh, then you have python also because php is also a uh, scripting language so I don't think that they will uh, test you on programming in two different questions, two all questions. But let me let me uh, do a bit of analysis and let you uh, know.
calculate the total of set of numbers entered by the user. Again, we'll use the wrong value, right? When he enters zero, uh, it should uh, stop and output the total. Let's modify the program. Okay, so this will the program. So will the program. So there can be different solutions, eh? different solutions. As long as the the logic key is correct and if you are getting the correct output, so always uh, test it. One, two, three. Dola is one pahala. Yes. Okay. So can you guys uh, modify the program to output uh, the the number of uh, values that I enter? And then output okay uh, the total is uh, total of uh, three numbers you entered is this modify it should display the number of uh, values that you enter and it should uh, uh, output uh, the total of uh, five numbers uh, you entered is this you need a count Counter ah, no, that's the zero code, no? I don't know, you are you are instructing, yes. Okay. Uh, this is what we can do. We can have a counter count equals uh, zero and then as soon as he enters a number I will increase the count by one because uh, That's one number and then we go on right uh, Now the problem is uh, even when he enters zero it will be taken into count Right and then uh, when you're printing we minus one and print count right so for example if others are having uh, issues, let, let us know. Huh? Others others means uh, both me, Lashani, Lushan, and uh, user 1004. Right, so 1, 2, okay, total of two numbers is 15. 9 plus 6 is 15. Okay, good, Lashani. I'm not really going to check uh, whether it is right or wrong, right? So I, I assume that it's right. Eh? Otherwise, uh, time will pass. You are printing the number inside the loop, no? We are adding uh, one to num. This num is entered by the user. Right? So we don't need to add one to num, right? Yes. All right. So let's go to another one. I'll share all these codes with you. I said you don't need these two, right? One thing is you don't need to add one to the uh, number that you enters. Because you're adding one and then well, you're adding it to total. When he enters six, uh, you'll be adding uh, seven into total, right? You need the, the counter and uh, then you add the number to total and then finally you output uh, both the count and the uh, total. Okay? All right, so let's look at another one.
Okay. Um, um, remember, I told you uh, about functions and procedures that day, right? Um, so, can you guys do this? Um, Okay, so this is an example of uh, function and procedure. Um, user enters uh, two numbers We sent us uh, enter two numbers uh, to, uh, to, uh, to a function. It should evaluate the numbers and output uh, true or false. If the first number is greater than the second, right? Okay, can you? So it's a function, right? It's a function. Then it should be returning a value, right? So this return value is a uh, Boolean value. Return uh, a Boolean value. It will be returning a boolean value so it should evaluate the two numbers and uh, that means it should compare the two numbers right if the first one is greater than the second uh, based on that uh, it should uh, output true or false right quickly and it's a function first you need to define the function then you need to call the function Okay, so guys, here's the answer. Um, so this is the definition of the function, right? Uh, def, I use def, and the function name, right? It can be anything, right? Like uh, uh, Tarana has used f. So likewise, it can be any name. Uh, but remember, it shouldn't be a keyword. Uh, then the brackets should come, and then the parameters should come, right? Now this one is taking two parameters, a and b. Now these names um, can be uh, again anything, right? Uh, n1, n2, or num1, num2, doesn't matter. And then uh, if a is greater than b, return true. So remember this has to be capital T, otherwise it's not uh, a Boolean value. So return true, else return false, right? And then this is the calling of the function uh, where we call it by now. See if I run this, it is giving false because 50 in the 2D is not greater than 50. So it comes in the else part, right? So if I change values, it's going to be true, right? So we can modify this program by asking the user to enter these two. Now this is the sub numbers. Then of course uh, you can have the input command here. Program. Uh, this is the main program, and you can ask the user to enter the two numbers. Right. Enter number one. Then uh, you put it into a variable, like number two. Right. So then you ask the user to enter number two. Right. And then here you need to pass. Well, uh, here what you do is you simply replace these with the variable name remember num1 and num2 okay that's how it happens right and uh, the procedure has to be defined first before you call it otherwise it will say uh, cannot find the function or the procedure first you define it and then only you call it okay uh, you can also in this into 
a function called main. Uh, then of course, what you do is def main right column, and then like that. Right, that is the definition of the main function. But by default, also you are in the main main program, although it is not really a function there. Right? But if you want, you can put it into a function called main. Right now, what should happen is now if you run this. Okay, hold on. I haven't uh, defined n1 and n2. Okay, now if I run this, it's going to give what will it give? What can be the output? What will be the output? <laughs> if I run, will it give an error message? Uh, will there be an output or will there? Will there be no output? Okay, what about others? Others? I want everybody to talk. Eh? Today is the last day and you are not talking. Ah, it's okay, it's okay. Then at least type. Oh, my, my audio, right? Sorry about that because I'm using the hotspot in the phone and whenever I get a call, it disconnects. So I have to uh, cut the call, right? Uh, okay. Yeah, that's right. Names are good. Uh, the problem is uh, we are not calling the function. Therefore, it's not going to give an output, right? So this type of questions are possible in the, in the paper. They give a code and they will ask for the output. What can be the output, in, especially in the MCQ, right? So what you need to do is name all the function like that and it's going to give the answer right okay so let's look at a few more before we take the questions from the papers right so let's look at some uh, string manipulations right string manipulations um right now you can see uh, we are storing a uh, hello world in a variable called world right and uh, let, let me show you why, why uh okay so let me let's uh, run this one by one right okay so um <clears throat> We are, we are storing hello world in uh, the variable world, right? Uh, sorry, word. So now when you say uh, word uh, one, uh, it actually acts as a list or, a, or an array, right? Uh, so if you run this, you can see it's going to give E because you know that uh, list uh, index starts with zero so this will be zero this will be one two three like that right so what we are doing here is sorry about that too many calls right okay um right so then uh, this one uh, print length word Okay, so you know, length is used to uh, get the uh, length of the word, which will give you the number of characters we have. Okay. Use 11. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So, it's including uh, the space, right? Including the space. Right, then these are some of the, okay, if you if you print the word zero, it is going to give. What will it give? If you print word zero, yes. Okay, it's going to give H. Right. Okay, so now let's look at. Uh, Yeah. 
okay now compare these right these operations print uh, word 0 to 1 0 to 1 now this uh, just acts, acts as a uh, for loop just like a for loop right so you know in the for loop it doesn't go up to the uh, uh, upper boundary so it'll this will be actually 0 to 0 it won't go up to 1 right so that's why you are getting h here in the first one get one char of the word same as above right then this one uh, it will move from uh, 0 to 2 even though i put uh, 3 it goes only up to 2 that's why 0 1 2 h e l comes okay uh, get the first three uh, characters this is another way of getting the first three characters uh, you don't put uh, 0 there all in and 3 right so i'll give these files to you and uh, this one get the last three characters uh, you can see d l r is coming so minus three uh, and this can be blank with the last three characters and this one uh, get all but the first three characters first three characters uh, h e l you can see h e l is uh, removed and the rest of the characters are there. Right? And 0, 1, 2, 3. 0, 1, 2, 3. Right? This is 0, this is 1, this is 2, and this is 3. So, yeah, space is also considered as a character. So, here actually what happens is uh, in this one, it starts with the third position. It starts with the third position, right? Sorry about the background noise. Uh, my PP is also having an online class. Okay. Uh, so this is uh, 0, 1, 2. It will start with 3. Third character. I mean, the character in the third index is L. So L, O, and the rest of the uh, letters, right? Get all but the three first characters, chars. This one, uh, print, uh, get all but the last three characters right so you can see uh, in that one of course it is not really looking at the zero it's just uh, counting the letters right uh, these one two three three characters are omitted and it prints only up to that right so r l d uh, are omitted and it prints only up to w Okay, so these are all string manipulations. String manipulations. So everything uh, happens because this is taken as a list, a data structure. So you can uh, really look into the index and uh, control this way. Okay. Um, okay. Then let me show you this. So this is called concatenation. Um, concatenation you have a value for w1 you have a value for uh, w2 and then what happens is uh, it will join uh, these two words together right earlier we saw concatenation where we uh, join a text value with a variable value now here what happens is we are joining uh, two text values <clears throat> concatenation that is called concatenation concatenation But what happens here is uh, zero is uh, yes that's right when counting uh, from backwards uh, it's looking at the number of uh, letters right okay uh, so here zero will be printed uh, 10 times you can just put the value and uh, multiplication and 10 right one two three uh, four five six seven eight nine ten right Okay, look at this one. Uh, I saw this one uh, widely used in 
uh, the exam questions, the split, right? So, word three is banana space mango, right? Bubble sorting, right? Okay, uh, there, there was bubble sorting a lot in the, the past paper question, so uh, yeah, uh, we will come across that, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what happens here is uh, using the split function, using the split function, what happens is it will split from a particular location where we uh, specify, right? Now, for example, here what happens is it will look for the first space, it will go from the beginning, and it will, when it comes uh, to the first space, it will split the words, right? Uh, so, banana will be one, mango will be one. And the interesting thing here is that, uh, again, split one, Right, right, puts all these values will be treated as a list, right? And uh, that is also there in most of the questions, right? So you split the whole word uh, whenever you find a space and put them as list elements into this particular variable, right? See, now it's a list. This is uh, this is. Uh, the zero position and this is the first person right so if you call uh, print split square bracket zero it will give this uh, print split uh, one square bracket one it will give this so it is treated as a uh, list okay Well, what you can do is uh, you can let it uh, split. You can let it split, okay, and then uh, you can access the value from the list using the index. Right. Like let's say you have plenty of uh, words here with spaces, right? You can let it split everything and put it into the list. And then what you can do is you can access uh, whatever the value you want. Uh, using the index. Right, what happens here is uh, this uh, chr function uh, prints the equivalent letter of the ASCII value. Right now, uh, you know, uh, this is the binary number which represents uh, the ASCII, you know, ASCII characters. You know, ASCII characters can be represented using binary numbers or binary numbers or hexadecimal values, right? right. And uh, can you guys tell me what is the letter it's going to print? This will print the equivalent letter of this. Yes. Good. Uh, well, uh, actually, Tarana, it is uh, capital A, right? It's capital A. Okay. Right. So if they if they give uh, a bit manipulation or a number for number uh, manipulation for this. Uh, ASCII based on ASCII. Always remember that 65 is capital A. Right? Then uh, B will be 66, 67 like that. Okay? Because uh, most of the time they will not give you the uh, number for all the letters. They will let you find it out. Right? So always remember that uh, 65 is capital A. If they give uh, out of that, like with simple and uh, then other characters, then they should give a table. ASCII table, right? But usually they will say, okay, uh, capital A is represented as uh, 65, and then they will give a word, uh, and then they will ask you to manipulate it. Then you should know, okay, 66 is B, 67 is uh, C, like that, right?
sorry sorry about that i had muted the mic right sorry uh okay so this is this old function is going to give you the ascii uh, value of the letter that we passed right so if we pass capital a capital a it's going to give you 65 right so if i pass uh, simple a It's going to give you 97. Okay, right. Right, round function. So all these are built-in functions, you see. Uh, round 5.6. And it's going to give you 6 because uh, 0 0.6 is more than uh, 5 therefore 1 is added to this so it becomes 6 right rounding function so i'm, I'm basically uh, you know showing you the uh, basics of these uh, applications so you guys better look at uh, other other examples right for example uh, uh, how uh, like different ways that round function can be used because these can be the uh, questions right but this is the general implementation of the round function mm, okay and then the in function you know that already right now you can see the difference between the round function and the in function round function uh, actually rounded uh, to the whole number but uh, in function just left the decimal part and gives you the int function right i mean the integer value or the whole number right then uh, you know the float function which will convert a value into a floating point number and uh, here is the implementation of the random i think i showed you but i didn't oh, no i sh i showed you no yes I see uh, we need to import this library or the module where we have the random function, random function. Right now, what random function does is uh, it will generate a random number between the two specified numbers, including those two numbers. Okay, right. So that's the random function. We can even uh, put this into the print command. Right? right. So remember, these libraries have to be uh, these libraries have to be imported at the beginning, very beginning, beginning of the program. Right? Can you give us examples where random function is used? Yeah, uh, something like uh, a number guessing program. A number guessing program uh, where the program asks uh, the user to uh, guess a number right when you run the program it will generate a random number and store it in a variable and then it will ask the user to enter uh, a number to guess that number so you can uh, have a small tiny game yeah. uh, fortune to be that's right <laughs> fortune to be uh, right okay And also, uh, or even a dice game. Yeah. Dice will have numbers from one to six, right? You can you can put the dice uh, using the random number. Right? Okay. So. Okay, so let's uh, quickly move to uh, some paper questions, right? Otherwise, we will not have time. Uh, well, if we, if we can't finish everything uh, today, I mean, uh, the programming part, I will have another session, right? Okay, so let's take... Uh,
this 2011 question on the paper. Yeah, bubble sort uh, questions were there in this uh, paper. So uh, let's uh, uh, discuss that when we come across that, right? Uh, or else I will uh, explain it uh, separately. Right, okay, so what's the answer for this? Which of the Python program uh, segment is syntactically correct? Enough space in the screen. Okay, someone says three, someone says five. Right, as you can say, if you look at this one, it's wrong, right? Because uh, there's no indentation here, right? Uh, then, so what about two? What's what's wrong? So it's always better to look at every question, right? All the all the answers before you select the answer, right? So what is wrong? What is wrong in the second one? Again, it is uh, indentation, right? What is uh, wrong with the third one? Is it wrong or right? Yeah, that is right, right? Okay, what about fourth? Again, uh, the two dots, uh, the columns are not there, right? Columns are not there. What about five? Why the problem is this for loop has been indented, right? It should be right here. Okay, solution is not uh, five, it should be three. Okay, right. I think we did this, right? When you are doing uh, algorithms, um, yes. Okay. Question number thirty. Yeah, thirty seven. What about this? Consider the following Python data items, uh, 15.2, 12, ABC, 5.2. Uh, how many of you have done these questions? This is 2011, baby. How many of you have done these papers? Before somewhere. <laughs> okay. Right. Doesn't matter, right? Doesn't matter whether you have done it or uh, not. It doesn't matter. It's just a brainstorming session here right now where we uh, all uh, get together and uh, discuss, right? Okay. And then uh, what we are doing, what we are trying to do is we are trying to go more deep into the question and find out why we leave out certain answers, why we uh, select other answers, right? Okay. Now, uh, uh, everyone says one, right? Yeah, that's correct because this is a uh, float, it's a real number, and this is a uh, uh, list because we have square brackets. Okay, that doesn't draw like that. Okay, square bracket, right? Uh, what is the data structure which uses? Uh, Uh, what is the data structure which uses uh, this? Parenthesis? Tuple, that's, that's right. Some people say couple. Some say tuple. Yes, that's right. So once it is defined, uh, uh, cannot be changed. But the list, of course, yes, you can change. That's all. Uh, Mutable, immutable, right? We'll look at that in a moment. Right. What is the data structure which uses uh, this curly brackets? Yeah, it is a dictionary. Plus, it's a dictionary. Right? Uh, list uses square brackets. Okay. Right. So the answer is this.
Okay, number 46. Yeah, that's easy. Uh, consider the following statements in uh, in a program. Uh, which of the above are syntactically correct in Python statements? What about A? Is it uh, correct or wrong? It is. It's a comment and it is correct, right? What about the second one? Is it correct or wrong? It is wrong. It is wrong. Yeah. In JavaScript, we use like this. C, we can use like that. And what about this? That is also that is also wrong, right? And what about this? That is correct because uh, there's a variable uh, initialization, and after that, there's a coming. That's fine. And what about this e? Is also correct, yes, because it's a comment, right? So the answer is uh, A, D, and E, this one, right? Okay. 